Hello and welcome to character creation for Neverwinter Nights Adventure Series number 13, Temple of Elemental Evil T1 to 4. So we're going to get right into it. My mom rolled this character and uh, it's an interesting character because this module accepts sub races. And by sub races, that means there's more races in the core third edition handbook and one of those races is Deep Gnome, aka Sverf Neblin, excuse me. So what are the Sverf Neblin? Well let's take a look. Hidden in the depths of the Underdark live the Sverf Neblin, or Deep Gnomes. Reclusive, suspicious, and resentful of intrusion into their cavern homes, the Deep Gnomes share little of the humor or openness of their surface cousins. Where a rock gnome community bursts with energy, excitement, and laughter, a Sverf Neblin city is dull and colorless place of echoing silence and furtive motion in the shadows. All hands are raised against the Sverf Neblin, or so the Deep Gnomes believe, anyway. The Deep Gnomes may be the world's stealthiest and most elusive folk, Centuries upon centuries of surviving the deadly perils of the Underdark have bred in this race an amazing gift for avoiding attention. In their cavern homes, they are nearly undetectable with magic, and even in the strange and threatening, to them, surface world, the Deep Gnome's natural stealth make them difficult to spot or catch. Sverf Neblin have gnarled physiques, brown or gray skin, gray eyes, and gray hair, although males are bald. They tend to be sullen, withdrawn, and suspicious to the fault. Oh, fairy re regions. Okay, we don't... Well, we can talk about regions. Very few of the underdark towns and strongholds of the Deep Gnomes are known to the so surface world. Four years ago, several hundred Sverf Neblin from the city of Blingdenstone were driven to the surface in the Silver Marches when their city was overrun by drow summoned demons. These exiles sought refuge in the lands of Silvery Moon and occasionally are occasionally seen in the north. So these are the traits that we're going to be dealing with. Plus two dexterity, minus two strength actually uh for the deep gnome it's going to be plus two dex uh let me see what this stats are here okay plus two dex minus two con and minus four charisma snurf neblin are quick but not terribly strong they're small as a small creature, the Snurf Neblin gains a plus one size bonus to armor class, plus one bonus on attack rolls, and plus four size bonus on hide checks, but uses smaller weapons than humans use, and the lifting and carry limits are three quarters of that of a medium character. This is important because this does play into the character that we are playing. Their base land speed is 20 feet, that's not going to matter. They have low light vision which means the surf, a Sverf Neblin can see twice as far as a human in starlight, moonlight, torchlight, and similar conditions of poor illumination. He retains the ability to distinguish color and detail under these conditions. They have dark vision. Sverf Neblin can see in the dark up to 60 feet. Dark vision is black and white only, but it's otherwise like normal sight, and Sverf Neblin can function just fine with no light at all. They get Stone Cunning. This ability grants a Surf Neblin plus two racial bonus on search checks to notice unusual stonework. Uh, it's just a plus two search. We don't have to get into all of that. Plus two search in Neverwinter Nights. Um, weapon familiarity is not going to matter because Gnome Hooked Hammers aren't in the game. Plus two racial bonus on saving throws against spells and spell like effects. Surf Neblin are resistant to magic. Uh, add plus one to the difficulty class for all saving throws against illusion spells cast by Sverf Neblin. Plus one racial bonus on attack rolls against kobolds and uh, goblinoids. Plus one dodge bonus to AC against all creatures. Plus two r racial bonus on listen checks. They have keen ears. Plus two racial bonus on craft checks. A Sverf Neblin's sensitive nose allows him to monitor all chemical processes by smell. Plus two racial bonus on hide checks. The Sverf Neblin is expert at remaining unseen. Uh, this bonus improves the plus four underground. And spell-like abilities I don't think are going to matter. I don't think they're implemented. They might be, but our charisma is not going to be over ten because it's a minus four charisma. And favored class rogue. A multi-class Sverf Neblin's rogue class does not count when determining whether he takes an experience point penalty. So that is in the game. And that is what we're dealing with. I'm gonna see if I can find a nice Sverf Neblin uh, photo. That looks like one right there. Alchemy and Bald. Class is going to be Wizard. She rolled a Wizard. 
So, to talk about a wizard here, wizards are arcane spellcasters who depend on intensive study to create their magic. To wizards, magic is not a talent, but a difficult, rewarding art. When they are prepared for battle, wizards can use their spells to devastating effect. When caught by surprise, they are vulnerable. The wizard strengthens her spells. Everything else is secondary. She learns new spells as she experiments and grows in experience, and she can also learn them from other wizards. In addition, over time, a wizard learns to manipulate her spells so they go farther, work better, or are improved in some way. A wizard can call a familiar, a small magical creature that serves her. Warning, to cast a spell, a wizard must have an intelligence score of 10 plus the spell's level. For example, to cast a 9th level spell, a wizard must have an intelligence of 19. Hit die are going to be d4, proficient with wizard weapons. They're not proficient with armor or shields. Skill points are times 4 at first level, and then it's 2 plus the intelligence modifier per level. Spell casting is arcane, intelligence based, and spell preparation is required, and spell failure from armor is a factor. Wizards begin the game knowing all cantrips and four first level spells. Uh, she's going to be neutral good. Um, and let's check out those abilities. So if she rolled these, it's going to be 9, 14, which is going to be a plus 2 that goes to 16. Constitution's a 12, which goes down to 10. Wisdom is a 10. Intelligence is 17. And the remaining four points go in Charisma, but Charisma is going to drop to eight uh, once we are out in the world. So we'll press OK on that. Packages. She wants to be a Conjurer. Conjurer uses his magic to summon forth creatures and materials. So we're not even going to configure the package. We're just going to go with Conjuration. And finally, Customize. Um... The head's got to be bald, so let's find a nice bald gnome. Okay, different heads in this module. Because you can be a goblin as well in this module. And other humanoid type creatures. Okay, now we're going backwards. I think I like this bald chap right here. Uh, hair color is going to be um, silverish. And skin color is going to be like a gray or silver. And I'm colorblind, so bear with me. Maybe something like um, that. Although that's kind of bluish, isn't it? And the hair color should be silver. I can't quite find a good silver. There's silver. And the skin color is brown or gray, so it still looks blue to me. There we go. And check out the clothing. Think something like that is appropriate. Say. He's going to be 250 years old. They live to 350 to 500 years like other gnomes. Um, his name is going to be Dream. Derek. Dream Derek. And the voice is going to be Good Wizard. Now you shall taste my power. And Deity... Hold on one second. Okay, we jumped to this. This is going to be the deity, Caladuran Smooth Hands, also known as the Deep Brother, was a neutral gnome deity. He was primarily venerated as the patron of the Underdark-dwelling gnome subrace, the Svarth Neblin. 
Master of Sorn, Stone, Lord of Deep Earth, Deep Brother. He's neutral. His portfolio is mining and stone carving. His domains are knowledge and nature. Knowledge of the ages, read thoughts, charm animals and plants. His favored monsters are earth elementals. And uh, was a distant ally of the other non-evil deities of the gnome pantheon. So that will be Caladoran Smooth Hands will be the deity. Dream Derek. And we are ready to play. So in the next episode, I'm going to start the module. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you tune in for this adventure. It's going to be a lot of fun. Temple of Elemental Evil is a great module to play through, and I think I picked out a good one, a good interpretation of it. So I hope you stick around. And uh, yeah, we'll check out the adventures of Dream Day De Eric. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.